Hello Electroheads and welcome to a new episode of Tiny Car, Huge Man. This is the Seat Me Electric and it is pretty much the cheapest electric car that you can buy right now. Now I say pretty much because in actual fact I think there are three electric cars cheaper than this one but allow me to explain why they don't count. One of them is the Renault Twizy which let's be honest not really a car more like a quad bike with a roof and the other two are the Smart 4.2 and 4.4 and those have only got about 80 miles of range which means you're going to need to buy a second car which means they're really not that cheap. This is the cheapest electric car that you could actually live with as your one and only car. It's got four doors, four seats and 161 miles of range and you can have this car or either of its sister cars the VW E Up or Skoda Citygo E for less than £20,000 after the government grant. That is cheap, like not like electric car cheap, like actually cheap. The question is, is it cheap and cheerful or cheap and a little bit depressing? Let's start with the way it looks. The exterior styling of the Mi Electric is fine. It's not offensive to look at, but it won't be winning any beauty contests. And for me, it isn't quite as cute as the E Up. That being said, it's grown on me during my week with it and I really like these little fangs on the front bumper. Nice touch. If I had one of these, I'd probably spec it in the brightest colour available just to cheer it up a little bit. The interior, however, is much more interesting. Inside the Mi Electric, there are a few jazzy touches which I really quite like. Like these striped, sporty looking seats. Like this strip of plastic in the door which is actually a little bit sparkly when the light catches it. And, my favourite, this weird abstract modern artwork that adorns the dash. A little bit like the one you get in a Rolls Royce Phantom. Overall, definitely on the cheerful side of cheap in here. Yes, it's a little bit cheap plasticky down here and down here, but it's an economy car, what do you expect? And also, having cheap plastic for your door bins, I feel like that's one of those things that only car journalists actually care about. Now, controversially, one of my favorite things about this cabin is the lack of any kind of infotainment system. Look, no touchscreen, instead, a phone holder. And I'm absolutely fine with that because you know what? My phone works great and most infotainment systems suck. This is a really clever piece of cost cutting as far as I'm concerned. Worth noting, you do have to have a smartphone if you're still rocking the Nokia 3410 brick. This is not gonna work for you. Just something to keep in mind if you're a very old person or drug dealer. Let's now move on to what the Mi Electric is like to drive. And it's more good news. First of all, this thing is so comfortable. I did not expect a car this cheap to be so good at ironing out bumps and cracks in the road. It's even more comfortable than that Honda E that I drove a few weeks ago, which is much more expensive. The trade-off to those very soft springs is it does roll around quite a bit when you chuck it through some corners, but then again, this car isn't exactly designed to be driven on the ragged edge, is it? It's just so relaxing to drive. Visibility's good, driving position's good, steering is super light, and even though it's quite spacious in here, it feels absolutely tiny on the road. It's so easy to thread it through gaps. But it's just so easy. I feel like I could take a nap right now. As far as driving modes, well, there's no sport button in here, unsurprisingly, but we do have normal, eco, and eco plus. And of course, being an electric car, it's quite nippy. It's only got like 80 horsepower, but if you punch it pulling away from a set of lights, you can embarrass most petrol powered cars. You also run out of battery quite quickly. And I just love the little noises it makes. Listen, that's the regen braking system. It whines like a little toy car. It's so cute. Oh, I should mention, because I haven't yet, this car only comes with one battery option. It's 36 kilowatt hours, and from a rapid charger, you can get it up to 80% in about an hour. From a seven kilowatt wall box at home, it's gonna take you four hours or so. It also has regenerative braking, which has four different strength settings. I find myself pretty much constantly driving with the regen on the highest possible setting, partly because it maximizes range, but mostly because I find one pedal driving really fun. It's like a little game you play with yourself. You've got to judge when to start lifting off the throttle so that you stop just in time for the junction. If I had one complaint, it's that I wish there was a fifth stronger regen setting. The highest one on this isn't quite strong enough to bring the car to a complete stop sometimes, so you have to use the brake as well. A little bit annoying. 
as you can probably guess, the Mi Electric is not the biggest fan of motorways. It copes pretty well considering, but at the end of the day, it's tiny, slab-sided and limited to 82 miles per hour. It can handle them, but it's definitely a car that's happiest when it's going less than 50 miles an hour. In terms of other complaints, it's not a very long list. As I mentioned before, I don't really think it looks that interesting. The boot is tiny and although I stand firm on my stance regarding the phone holder, I imagine it will annoy some people that you don't even have the option to spec infotainment if you want it. Also the rear windows don't open, like they don't slide down, you can just pop them out an inch, which, I mean, come on, treat us to some windows in the back maybe. I have so enjoyed zipping around in this car for the last week or so. Yes, it's small and easy to drive, but it's also spacious, quiet and comfortable. As a daily driver, it gives you very little to complain about. It is the definition of cheap and cheerful. And what's more, this is the kind of electric car that we need most right now. Yes, the Porsche Taycans and the Tesla Cybertruck steal all the headlines, but if electric cars are going to catch on in a big way, what we really need is, well, better charging infrastructure and also more cheap electric cars with good range. We need more cars like this and this one, this one set a very high bar. And there we have it, the Seat Mi Electric. Pretty much the cheapest electric car you can buy right now and one that you really might want to as well. Make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.